Hey everybody, Matthew here from My First. Hey everybody, Matthew here from Marine D. Get together. Hey everybody, Matthew here from Bulk Reef Supply. Let's make some beginner videos. Hey everybody, Matthew here, your beginner guru at BRS. From now on, when you see me, when you see this face, this mug, you are gonna be getting beginner videos. I'm so happy that we're gonna be able to pick up where we left off with our beginner how-to guide for saltwater aquariums and reef tanks. And this episode, we're coming at you with episode number 20, mechanical filtration. Even though mechanical filtration is the absolute backbone of filtration in the saltwater aquarium hobby, my experience has been that beginners don't fully understand what mechanical filtration is, what kind of maintenance to do, the different types out there, and what our end goal is with mechanical filtration. So let's start off episode 20 and jump straight in to answer the question, what is mechanical filtration? Very simply, mechanical filtration removes particulate matter from water. It removes things. It removes fish food, fish poop, free floating algae, Anything that's a solid substance, it's going to remove. The easiest way to understand it is with a sponge. And I actually prepared a little experiment. So we got a sponge, we have some water, and we have a whole bunch of pieces of paper. So we're gonna take the paper, we're gonna put it in the water, we're gonna swirl it around. Wait, I got more paper. I have more paper here. Okay, we're gonna swirl it around. Here's your sponge, here's mechanical filtration. You take the mechanical filter, whatever it's gonna be, and you pour it through, and I'm just gonna pour this right on my desk. Ready, here we go, here we go. Oh. Okay, did you see that? The water passed through, and look what was filtered out, all of the paper. That's mechanical filtration. So why is mechanical filtration important? There's three things that it really does. Probably the first and most important part of mechanical filtration is it removes that particulate matter, those organics from your water, and you remove them before they break down into toxic ammonia. The second is that it polishes your water. It just makes it more clear. Rather than having a whole bunch of free floating particulate matter and organics in the water, a mechanical filter can remove those and increase the water clarity. And thirdly, it helps keeps your nitrate and phosphate levels low by removing organics from the water. So do you need mechanical filtration in your saltwater aquarium? The most simple answer for a beginner is 100% absolutely, positively, yes you do. As you progress in the hobby and get more advanced, you're gonna run into people who don't really use traditional forms of mechanical filtration anymore. Rather, they might use something like an extremely well-stocked refugium with tons of macroalgae that's consuming so many of the nutrients that they haven't found a need for mechanical filtration. But while it's possible to run an aquarium with very little to no mechanical filtration, the people who do that are by far the exception to the rule and not the rule itself. So as a beginner, absolutely, you are going to run some form of mechanical filtration. And just FYI, I have eight tanks in my gallery right now. Every single one of them runs at least one form of mechanical filtration. So what are the types of mechanical filtration? Well, number one is a sponge. It's probably your most simple. You can get them in more coarse kinds like this, or you can get them with a finer mesh which filters out smaller particulate matter. Number two, and probably the type you hear most about in this hobby are, are filter socks. These are filter socks. They come in, in, in different sizes. You get a filter sock holder, and all it does is the water passes into the filter sock and particulate matter is filtered out. You take these out, you wash them, you're done. Your standard filter sock, kind of like this, it's kind of this thick, fleecish material, comes in 200 microns, which is probably good for 99% of beginners. The third kind of mechanical filtration is what we call in the hobby filter floss. All it is, you've probably seen this over at Michael's, it's a huge bag of stuffing. And this stuffing is basically what you find when you do like a build a bear or you, you know, you make your own stuff. You stuff this in there. And what you do with it is you just pull a little bit off at a time and you stick it where your sponge goes or where your filter sock goes. And then all you do is you just pull it out and you throw it away. You go back to your bag and you grab some more. That way you never have to stop and wash your filter socks or pull out your sponge and clean it and clean it and clean it. Some people really prefer polyester filter fiber. I've used it in the past. I don't currently use it, but it's definitely a good option. A media cup is basically a cup, right? So this is a, this is a filter sock, right? And this is a cup. And a media cup would have all sorts of holes on the bottom, and then you just place the media cup in where you would place the filter sock, so instead of a filter sock, and then water passes into the media cup, 
and then it filters out. So you could take something like a, like a sponge, put a sponge in a media cup, or you could take something like the filter floss and put the filter floss in the media cup and then it would catch it. Media cups are, are super helpful if you have a filter sock holder, whether it's in a rear filtration chamber or in a sump, and you wanna use something like filter floss to make your life a little bit easier. I think we're up to number five, which is a protein skimmer. And hold on a sec, hold on a sec. I gotta go grab one so I can show you. The basics of a protein skimmer. It has a pump down here. The pump creates bubbles. This chamber fills with bubbles, fills with bubbles. And then the organic matter, the fish food, the fish waste, whatever else is attracted to those bubbles. And those bubbles rise, 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 rise. And they go to the top and they overflow into a collection cup. And then what you do, mechanical filtration, is you remove the collection cup and you clean it. I would say protein skimmers are one of the backbones of mechanical filtration in this hobby. You don't need a mechanical filter to be successful. It really depends on your tank. My seahorse tank over here has no protein skimmer. My reef tank here has no protein skimmer. My harem tank does have a protein skimmer and my tanks over here don't have protein skimmers. Really a protein skimmer is there for medium to high nutrient loads. If you're gonna put a lot of fish and livestock in your tank and you're finding that a filter sock or filter floss isn't quite filtering enough, then you can add a protein skimmer. You can buy protein skimmers like this one that fit in a sump. There are also protein skimmers that are a lot smaller that fit in a rear filtration chamber or that even hang off of the side. So there are a lot of options out there for a protein skimmer. And number, number six, the sixth kind of mechanical filtration is a fleece roller mat. I have never used a roller mat, but I've seen them and I think they look fantastic. Here are some images of a roller mat. Roller mats basically fit into your sump compartment that houses your filter sock. And what it does is it has a little water level sensor. So as the fleece gets clogged up, the water level will slowly rise in that chamber. And once it reaches a sensor, that will trigger a motor, which will then roll up a little bit of that fleece filter sock, exposing new and clean fleece to continue filtering. This is fantastic for mechanical filtration because you don't have to get in there all the time to either clean out your filter socks or remove your sponge. The fleece roller mat does it for you. The only real thing you have to do is replace that fleece roller mat when it's used up and you're good to go. Can you over mechanically filter your water? Absolutely, absolutely you can. When I started out in this hobby, when I was a total beginner, the goal for me, and really the goal in the hobby was zero nitrates and zero phosphates. So we used all sorts of GFO and we used oversized protein skimmers with different layers of mechanical filtration to achieve zero nutrient levels. Well, here's what we've learned in this hobby. If you have zero phosphates and zero nitrates, you cause a couple really big problems in your tank. The first problem is your corals are not gonna reach their full color potential and they're also not gonna grow nearly as quickly. And in fact, some of your corals may even die without phosphates or nitrates in your water. They need some levels of those things. The other thing we've noticed is when your phosphate and nitrate levels get too low, other kinds of nuisance algaes and bacteria tends to take over. So you get outbreaks like hair algae outbreaks, cyanobacteria, and dinoflagellus, which you don't need to know about, but they are such a pain to get rid of in your aquarium. The last thing I wanna to touch on today is what kind of maintenance is needed for all of the types of mechanical filtration we talked about today. But before we do that, we made a fantastic video all about filter socks. And actually, there's two great videos all about filter socks. And the BRS Investigate series basically found out that if you change your filter sock or your mechanical filtration, whatever it is, every three to four days, that's like the perfect amount. If you wanna check out those videos, we will pin a link in the comments below. Let's start with filter socks. Once they're dirty, how do you clean them? The easiest way to clean them is just to pull out your filter sock once it's filthy. Go over to your washing machine, put it in your washing machine, and don't put any soap in there, but fill up your bleach compartment with bleach, run it on hot, put it in the dryer, and you're pretty much done. If you wanna take it to the next level, what you can do is you can take your filter sock and you can turn it inside out. Once it's inside out, you can go to your sink or you can go outside and you can rinse it off first. Then go ahead, put it in your washing machine, add some bleach, do not add soap, wash it, dry it, and you should be good to go. Now, obviously you may be thinking right now, you're putting bleach in your aquarium. No, 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 no. If you were to put bleach in your aquarium, you would kill everything, obviously. But once bleach dries out, it's no longer toxic. So as long as you wash this and dry it, and make sure it's completely dry, it's completely safe to put back in your tank. Second up is sponge maintenance. This is probably the easiest one. You just pull your sponge out, you go to the sink, 
you rinse it several times until the water runs clear, then get as much of that tap water out as you can and put it back in place. Okay, okay, I take it back. I said, I said sponge maintenance was the easiest, but I actually think filter floss maintenance is the easiest because all you do is you remove the filter floss, you throw it in the trash, and you add some more filter floss. That's it. Skimmer maintenance, also relatively simple. Once this gets somewhat full, I never like to let this fill all the way up because one, you're gonna spill it, and two, sometimes these things can bubble over and then all those nitrates and nastiness goes back into your tank. But all you do is you take the top portion off, you go to the sink, you dump it out, you give it a quick rinse, put it back on, and it's done. And lastly, for those of you who want to explore the roller mat option, your job is probably easiest of all. You just have to watch for when that roller mat is all used up, buy a new roller mat, put the roller mat in, and you're done. Well, that's it, everybody. We finished our first episode here at BRS. Thank you for watching. That was episode 20. We'll put a link to those two videos we talked about either in the description below or pin them to the comments. Next week, episode 21 is, wait, I know this. I wrote it down, biological filtration. As always, everybody, thank you for watching. Happy reefing, be well, and we'll see you next time.